Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Welcome to Inspired by the Quran series. Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala says in the Quran, "Hatta idha ataw 'ala wadi naml Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala mentioned in the Quran the story of Sulaiman alayhi salam. And when Sulaiman alayhi salam was approaching a valley, valley, valley of ants, Allah mentioned in the Quran that Hatta Ida Atawa Ada Wadin Naml. So when he was approaching that valley, the valley of ants, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in previous verses about Sulaiman alayhi salam and Dawud alayhi salam. So Allah says in the previous verses, Walaqad Ataina Dawuda wa Sulaiman ilma. That indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Dawud alayhi salam and Sulaiman alayhi salam knowledge, ilim. And <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave both of them, the father and the son, both were the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were blessed with the knowledge of deen and knowledge of dunya. So both were blessed with the knowledge of this life and the knowledge of our deen religion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught Sulaiman alayhi salam kalamu tayr he was able to understand the language of birds. He was able to understand the language of ants. And he was able to understand the language of animals. Not only that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the ability, the power to be able to control the jinn kind and the mankind. Both were managed by Sulaiman alayhi salam. Ma'an nubuwa wal mulk. He was also given the prophethood and the kingdom. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the story of Sulaiman alayhi salam, Dawud alayhi salam and then Allah continues by saying that both of them were grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah alladhi faddalana ala min ibadihi al-mu'mineen. That you know they were praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the favor they were given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over the servants or the believing servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, you know, Wawaritha Sulaiman Dawood, that Sulaiman alayhi salam inherited Dawood alayhi salam. Waqala ya ayyuhan nas. And then he said, you know, all the mankind, Ulimna mantiqa tayri, that Allah taught us the language of the birds. Wa utina min kulli shay, and Allah gave us everything. In hadha lahuwa al fadlul mubin. And that was a great favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Sulaiman inherited his father, the Mirath, inheritance. And this inheritance is not the inheritance of wealth. In, in fact, it was the inheritance of Al Ilm and Al Nubuwa and Al Mulk. So Sulaiman inherited, inherited his father the prophethood and the knowledge and the kingdom but not in wealth and that is because al anbiya the prophets they do, they do not inherit the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said nahnu ma'ashiru al anbiya la nuwarithu ma taraknahu fa huwa sadaqa that we do not inherit whatever we leave behind it is sadaqa it is charity Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says in the Quran that وَحُشِرَ Sulaiman جُنُودُهُ مِنَ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنسِ وَالطَّيْرِ فَهُوَ يُوزَعُونَ So the entire force was brought together um, among which was the mankind, the jinn kind and the birds. They all were brought together and they all were lined up and, and Sulaiman was marching forward. And then Allah says, Hatta ida atawa ala wadin naml. So as he was marching forward with his army of everything, and then when he was approaching the valley of ants, one of the ants said, Ya ayyuhan naml. She called upon other ants and she addressed them. Like the way we address a congregation by saying, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, when the Quran says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, or Ya ayyuhal nas, all the mankind, or all the believers. So this, the ant actually addressed other ants, and she said, Ya ayyuhal naml, all the ants, Udkhulu masakinakum, 
that go into your dwellings. لا يحتمنكم سليمان so that Sulaiman alayhi salam does not crush you, does not walk over you. وَجُنُودُهُ and his army. Imagine a small ant saying to the other ants when she saw Sulaiman alayhi salam was approaching the valley with his army. She called upon and she said, you know, Ya ayyuhan naml, udkhulu masakinakum, go into your dwellings. La yahtimannakum Sulaiman, so that he does not crush you over. Wajunuduhu and his army. Wahum la yashurun. And then she gives the justification by saying that they may do that, they may walk over, you may be crushed because they may not notice you. You can imagine the size, size of human beings and the size of small ants. Naturally, if an army is marching, approaching a valley, and if they pass through, the ants may be destroyed without being noticed. So again, look at the adab of small ants that you know, when she addressed, she actually gave justification because the Prophet of Allah cannot be unjust or cannot destroy any creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So she actually gave the justification that they may walk over, they may, may crush you without noticing you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says in the Quran, فَتَبَسَّمَ ضَاحِكًا مِّن قَوْلِهَا that Sulaiman when he heard the ants saying that or addressing other ants, he was amused by her speech, he was amused by her addressing, and he understood what she said to other ants. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَتَبَسَّمَ ضَاحِكًا مِّن قَوْلِهَا He smiled upon what she said. And then, he said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَقَالَ رَبِّ أَوْزِعْنِي أَنْ أَشْكُرَ نِعْمَتَكَ الَّتِي أَنَعَمْتَ عَلَيَّ Upon hearing this and understanding what she said, Sulaiman alayhi salam realized that he was blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has bestowed upon him many blessings. The blessing of kingdom, the blessing of prophethood, and the blessing of understanding different creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he, he realized those blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when the ant addressed other ants. And he made a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by saying, Rabbi awzi'ni an ashkura ni'mataka allati an'amta alayya. My Lord, give me the ability, give me the power. Rabbi awzi'ni an ashkura ni'mataka allati an'amta alayya. That I am able to be grateful to you, thankful to you for the blessings that you have bestowed upon me. This was the dua made by Sulaiman when he understood the language of the ants. And he made the dua of asking Allah to give him the ability, to give him the power, so that he can be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He can be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the blessings that Allah has bestowed upon him. What a beautiful lesson for us in this story. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the story of Sulaiman alayhi salam and through the story of Ant, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is actually teaching us how we should be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how we should be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the blessings that He has bestowed upon us. In life, Allah has blessed us with so many blessings. And the only way we can be Happy in life if we can be grateful to Allah, thankful to Allah for those blessings. It is a beautiful dua and Sulaiman could have just stopped there. But he continued. He said after that, قَالَ رَبِّ أَوْزِعْنِي أَنْ أَشْكُرَ نِعْمَتَكَ الَّتِي أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيَّ وَعَلَى وَالِدَيَّ that, oh Allah, give me the ability, give me the tawfiq, that I can be grateful to you, thankful to you for the blessings you have bestowed upon me. And also the blessings you have bestowed upon my parents. Again, teaching us how we can be grateful to our parents through showing gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the blessings he has bestowed upon our parents. Many of us may have our parents alive, and many of, us, many of us may not have our parents alive. In any situation, whether they are still alive or have passed away, 
We can be, can be grateful to our parents if we, can be, if, if we can show gratitude and our thanks to Allah for the blessings Allah has bestowed upon our parents. Again, he could have stopped there, but he continued. And then he said, رَبِّ أَوْزِعْنِي أَنْ أَشْكُرَ نِعْمَتَكَ الَّتِي أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيَّ وَعَلَى وَالِدَيَّ وَأَنْ أَعْمَلَ الصَّالِحَا Oh Allah, give me the ability, give me the power that I can do righteous deeds, الْأَعْمَالَ الصَّالِحَاتِ This is how we show our gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the blessings He has bestowed upon us that we are doing الْأَعْمَالَ الصَّالِحَاتِ We do good deeds in our life. And through doing good deeds, we show, show our gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And again, he was very specific. Not any kind of good deeds. He said, وَأَنْ أَعْمَلَ صَالِحًا تَرْضَى Not any kind of good deeds, but the good deeds which would please you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We may do many good things in our, in our life, and we may think it is a good deed. But if it doesn't please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it is not a good deed. So therefore, not any kind of good deeds, but the specific deeds which would, which would please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a very specific condition. The doing not only good deeds, but the good deeds which would please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is like saying, again, gaining knowledge, not any kind of knowledge, but al-ilm al al-nafi, the beneficial knowledge, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam again taught us. That we should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the knowledge which would benefit us. Allahumma allimna ma yanfa'una, wanfa'na bima allamtana. Oh Allah, you know, give us the knowledge which will benefit us and benefit us with the knowledge that you already have taught us. So therefore, not any kind of good deeds. Wa an a'mala salihan tarda. Oh Allah, give us the ability, give us the tawfiq that we can do righteous deeds which would please you. Now one may think that we can go to Jannah by doing good deeds. But as we know, that the reality is that we cannot go to Jannah by doing good deeds only. He could have stopped there, but he continued. And then he said, وَأَنْ أَعْمَلَ صَالِحًا تَرْضَاهُ وَأَدْخِلْنِي بِرَحْمَتِكَ فِي عِبَادِكَ الصَّالِحِينَ Oh Allah, enter me or admit me into Jannah among your salihin by your mercy. With the Salihin. So he said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Wa adhilni bi rahmatika fi ibadika salihin. Wa Allah, by your mercy. Wa adhilni bi rahmatika, enter me bi rahmatika by your mercy. Min ibadika salihin. With your salihin servants. Because you and I, we cannot go to Jannah by doing good deeds. In order to go to Jannah, we only can go to Jannah by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, we need to do good deeds. Good deeds is a condition. But we can never be satisfied. We can never rely upon our good deeds. It is a must. It is a condition that if we want to go to Jannah, then we have to do good deeds. But we cannot go to Jannah by doing good deeds only. While doing good deeds and after doing good deeds, we should be relying upon the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we want to go to Jannah. And that is the only way we can go to Jannah. So that also teaches us the humility that we can never be arrogant just because we are able to do some good deeds. We should always remain humble in our life and we should always be asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his mercy. Rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now this dua teaches us a great lesson how we can be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the blessings Allah has bestowed upon us. In addition to that, we should also try to be grateful to Allah while doing the good deeds. We should also try to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the specific blessings that Allah has bestowed upon us. Different people may be blessed with different blessings. Some people may be blessed with health. Some people may be blessed with wealth. Some people may be blessed with education. Some people may be blessed, blessed with knowledge. Some people may be blessed with time. Some people may be blessed with skills. So whatever you and I are blessed with, whether health, wealth, time, skills, energy, we should also try to utilize those skills and those blessings and try to be grateful to Allah. Or in, in other words, we should try to be grateful to Allah through those blessings. So if you have the health, utilize the health. If you have the wealth, utilize the wealth so that you know, we can attain 
or try to attain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So using the health, using the wealth, using the skills, using the time for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sharing the divine guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the humanity who are being deprived from this blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I hope and pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the tawfiq and gives us the realization that whatever blessings Allah has bestowed upon us that we're able to show our gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we can do that, Allah will give us more and more. As Allah says, لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ وَلَإِن كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِي لَشَدِيدٌ If we can be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will be giving us more and more. لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ وَلَإِن كَفَرْتُمْ However, unfortunately, if we are ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inna adabi la shadeed, Allah warns us, He says that, know that my punishment is very tough, very severe. Jazakallah, assalamu alaikum.